Hi everyone, welcome back. Today, I'm super excited to share with you how I enhance my creative workflow using AI and how this is made even much more powerful by the performance of my Dell Workstation 5680. As a creative, speed and performance are crucial to my workflow. Waiting for images to render or effects to apply can really slow down the creative process. For those interested in the specs, I'm using a Dell Workstation 5680 equipped with 64GB of RAM and an NVIDIA RTX 5000 ADA generation laptop GPU graphics card. This setup ensures smooth and efficient performance for all my creative tasks. For more information on workstations optimized for media, entertainment, and AI, you can visit the URLs in your screen. These URLs are also in the description of the video. Now, let's jump onto some Topaz tools. Let's start with Topaz Denoise AI. I'm using Topaz Denoise AI to remove noise from this image. All right, here in Topaz Denoise, let me go ahead and uh, click on this button and just open this one image that I had prepared. Notice that all I did was open it and it's, it's already doing its thing. I mean, look at here on the left, look at here on the right, and we can see it like this as well. See with this line? Look at all the noise here and look at it. I, I didn't do anything. All I did was open this image. But let's check a couple of things. So file, preferences, just a couple of things like a suffix for the name. And of course, we can apply a color correction or not. And the AI pro processor can be either auto or we can choose the NVIDIA RTX card. So if we just do choose the NVIDIA RTX card, um, you will see that the performance is going to be a little bit faster. Um, of course, the auto could have just chosen that one by default, depending on how your system is set up. Let's look at some of these AI models. Look at the standard. Look how it's just rendering down here super fast. Uh, clear, low light. Look at that, mm, severe noise, and of course, raw, and you can see it right there. And then we can actually change some of the preferences in the model. So like we can remove noise more or less, we can enhance the sharpness, we can recover original detail and all of that good stuff. So I'm just gonna do a zoom to fit so that we can see it a little bit better. And this is a, a, a quite bad image. I'm just going to select severe noise here and before, after, and it's a huge difference, huge difference. Uh, all I have to do to save it is just click on save. I'm not really going to do it now because I'm just showing it to you. And that's it. Click on save image and you're done. And as you can see, the software works incredibly fast and efficiently thanks to my powerful computer. Utilizing AI-powered software like Topaz Denoise AI has significantly improved my workflow. It's fascinating to see the advancements in AI technology, and it's crucial for us creatives to stay updated. So, on that regard, I am super excited to announce that I will be presenting at an upcoming AI summit organized by FMC, Future Media Concepts, Dell, and NVIDIA, in partnership with NAB. The event will be held online on September 14th and 15th and in person on October 24th and 25th, in conjunction, obviously, with NAB Show in New York. It's a great opportunity to learn about the latest trends in AI and how they can be leveraged in creative work. For more details on the AI Summit, visit AICreativeSummit.com. At this point, I would like to clarify that neither Dell, nor Topaz, nor anyone else, no one is sponsoring this video or paying me to do this. Dell made this workstation available to me, but had no expectation or requirements. I bought all of my Topaz tools just like everyone else. I am sharing this information of my own volition 
simply to promote my sessions at the AE Summit. So again, no one, no one is paying me to do this. Now, let's jump onto Topaz Sharpen AI. As a creative professional, the quality of my work is paramount. Sometimes, due to various reasons, the photos that I capture are not as sharp as I would like for them to be. This is where Topaz Sharpen AI comes into play. This software uses artificial intelligence to analyze and enhance the sharpness of your images. Here, I'm loading a slightly blurred image into the software. And it immediately starts working. Uh, I want you to again notice that I didn't click anywhere. This is just doing its thing. Look at the difference. Look on the left, look on the right, look at her face. Look at her face here. I like this a little bit better. Look at that. Yes, I get it. We still have to do a little bit of fixing. Look at the little boy's nose here and all of that. Look at that. But huge difference. And just like with the other tool, you can actually change the, the model and then you can change the model parameters uh, in here. Uh, just like before, if you go to File, Preferences, you can actually choose to have uh, the NVIDIA RTX uh, or whatever video card you have uh, be the one doing the heavy lifting. And um, you can see how this is incredibly easy. So I want to do one more of the denoise one, uh, and that is this picture. Uh, this is uh, a selfie that my mother took probably, I don't know, 55, uh, probably more than that, probably 60 years ago. And she just took uh, that on in front of the mirror. So this is an old picture. And of course, it has sentimental value. And l look how incredibly well it did without my clicking anywhere. And yes, I get it. I'm going to have to clean it up here a little bit, maybe enhance the contrast a little bit and all of that. But look at the noise. I mean, let me go back to 100%. Look at that. Look at the face, the eyes and all of that. And then look at it now. It's an incredible difference. As you can see, Topaz Sharpen AI did a fantastic job in sharpening the image. It's impressive, really, how AI technology has revolutionized the creative process. Now, let's discuss Topaz Gigapixel AI. Quality is everything in the world of creative arts. You know that. Sometimes we come across images that are perfect in every way, except for the resolution. They're tiny. That's where Topaz Gigapixel AI comes in handy. This software uses artificial intelligence to enlarge images while maintaining a high level of detail. So here we are in Topaz Gigapixel, and uh, I'm just going to click here where it says Browse Images, just to open one that I had uh, prepared. And this is simply a screen grab from Premiere Pro that I need to upsample so that I can show the details a little bit better when I create a training video that I'm working on. And I can scale this 0.5 times, 2 times, 4 times, 6 times. I like the 4 times for this. And look, I didn't do anything. I look at the difference. This is before, after. We can see the comparison side by side here. And, you know, we can change things as well. We can also crop. We can also turn on the AI model and we can say, hey, you know what? This is going to be lines, for example. And it's going to change the algorithm that it uses to upscale these. Uh, I can say, hey, low res, very compressed. And you can see down here that it's working really, really fast. As you can see, Topaz Gigapixel AI does an amazing job of enlarging the image while preserving its detail. It's incredible how AI technology has transformed our creative possibilities. Now, let's get into Topaz Photo AI. Topaz Photo AI helps me achieve the best quality by providing a range of AI-powered tools in one place. This software uses artificial intelligence to analyze and enhance your images in various ways, from denoising and sharpening to enlarging and more. Here, I'm loading an image that needs enhancement into the software. 
So this one is Topaz Photo AI. I'll click on the same browse images and I will use uh, this one. This is a puffin that I recently took in, in Iceland, a picture of a puffin. And, you know, I, I really thought I had done a pretty good job, you know, and um, let me go ahead and zoom this out a tiny little bit. It'll go to 50%. And notice what is happening. Right now, it did a little bit of sharpening. Look at the original. See it right here? Let me zoom in more. Look at the eye and the hairs and the feathers. Look at that. See it here? It's almost like blurred and now boom. And of course, I'm getting this glow around the, the, the feathers. And maybe that's a little bit too much sharpening. And it would be if I, uh, I'm going to be zooming in this much. But I'm actually not. I'm actually going to be looking at, at it like yay. And look at the difference. I mean, now the original looks almost like if it were out of focus. And I want you to notice that this, it did everything automatic. Uh, it, it, I didn't tell it to upscale. It didn't feel like it needed noise removal. I can certainly turn it on. Um, there were no faces detected. There was no text detected. All of that good stuff. All of that good stuff. It simply did it. I mean, uh, I can just say, hey, remove some noise. It updates in no time. You can see the little update uh, in here. So now it's removing noise and sharpening. And look at this. If you just hover on top of the word subject, it's smart enough. Well, it's using AI to determine that it is the puffin that we are concerned. We don't care about the grass or we don't care about the background. It is the subject that we want. And of course, we can go into standard, strong, lens blur, motion blur, and all of that good stuff. I don't think it's necessary here. And yeah, this may look like it's a little bit too much. So I could turn the strength down a little bit. And it's removing noise and sharpening. You can see the update here. And once it's done, there you go. There you go. I am very happy with those results. There's a couple of drops here that I can easily clean in Photoshop. As you can clearly see, Topaz Photo AI did an amazing job of enhancing the image. It really is incredible how AI technology works in these cases. Now let's talk about video for a little bit. Topaz Video AI utilizes deep learning to upscale videos, reduce noise, and bring out intricate details. Whether you're restoring vintage footage or enhancing recent clips, this tool is truly a game changer. Here in Topaz Video AI, I'm going to go to the Preferences. So File, Preferences, and in here, I'm going to go to Processing. And yes, I'm using the NVIDIA RTX 5000. And I'm going to use a maximum of three processes. Um, we can go to the directories and you can change where the temp files, the model folder, and the export folders are. And now I think I'm just going to go ahead and import the video. This is a video that I had already prepared of Niagara Falls. And I want you to notice here on the right that you can choose presets. So I can just choose the auto crop stabilization, and that's exactly what's going to do. And here on the video, I'm going to stabilize it and upscale it two times. I'm going to leave the frames per second the same. I'm going to leave everything else the same about the only thing that I do need to change is here on the audio. Instead of copying, I'm going to convert it because I took this a long time ago with an old DSLR and um, it's just not compatible with that audio. So here we go. I'm just going to double check my settings and now I'll click on preview and the preview is going to start generating. And it does its first pass uh, pretty quickly. And then, you know, it starts processing it uh, for real. And you see the progress bar right here at the bottom is this blue bar. In the meantime, I'm just going to go ahead and triple check that all my settings are correct here on the right. And now it seems to have finished. So uh, actually, let me go ahead and really preview it. Uh, so I'll click on this preview button. 
And you can see that it's creating the preview here, and it sits quite fast. You can see the progress bar again here at the bottom. You can also see the progress bar here under these two monitors. So you're going to see the original on the left and the corrected one on the right, and wow, what a difference, right? I prefer it in just one monitor and then just sliding uh, the bar if I need to, but you see the original on the left and the corrected on the right. I'm going to go ahead and export it by clicking on the export button here on the bottom right hand side of the panel. And let's remember that it's stabilizing this clip and it's also upsampling it. Now that it's done, let me go into File Explorer and let's play the clip. And here it is. I'm just going to change the view to uh, Details of View. And look at the size, it's 128 meg. And I'm just going to double click it so that it opens in my default player, which happens to be VLC player. And here it is. I gotta say, it's a little grainy for my taste, but dang, this looks really good and pretty stable. This is old footage. I took this probably 10 years ago. Back in Explorer, let me right click and go to Properties. And now I'll go to Details and look, it's 3840 by 2160. And now this is the original. If I go to Properties, it is 1920 by 1080. So it did upsample it and I have to say I'm pretty happy with that. Now let's talk a little about Adobe Premiere Pro and text-based editing. Adobe Sensei, which is Adobe's AI and machine learning platform, powers the text-based editing feature, which allows you to convert spoken words into text and then edit the video by editing the text. So here in Premiere Pro, what we have is an interview that was done with several cameras, and we already have the multicam clip here. So I'm just gonna enable the multicam uh, view. And here we go. Let's start with this one. Notice how it's red now, so it's recording. And I'll go here. And I just want to make sure that you know that this is working even in the multi-camera. So now you see both, uh, you see all four cameras. And I'll go to this one and this one. And I think that's about enough, so I'm just going to stop. And of course, the cuts were made, so I'm going to go ahead and toggle the multi-camera off. And this is what I have, so it's just switching from one camera to the next and all of that good stuff. And I'm going to go ahead and render the audio just so that we can see the waveforms. Uh, of course, it's not necessary for what we're going to do, but, uh, but there you have it. And uh, we should be seeing the waveforms. They're a little bit low, so I'm just going to go to Essential Sound, tell it it's Dialogue, Auto Match, on the, and there you go. Now we can see um, these... Um, these waveforms a little bit better. Again, not that it matters. I'm going to go to the assets and I'm going to go to the Tascam file, which is the file that has the, the voiceover, the good voiceover that we're using. Not that it matters because everything is already in sync. So let me just go ahead and double click this and now I'll go to the text panel. If you don't see the text panel, just go under window and choose text. So there you go. I'm going to just click here. Uh, so I'm in the text panel, transcript, and I'm just going to click where it says transcribe. And it's going to tell me what the source clip is. It's in English. Don't separate speakers because it's only one person. So just transcribe. And it actually does it pretty quickly. And it's going to give me a text transcription. And I have to say, pretty accurate. So it's not perfect, but it's pretty accurate because it's using AI. So it's also predicting, you know, which words are going to go after which words. So, you know, it actually does a pretty, a pretty good job uh, on that. And then I will be able to edit the video by editing the text. It's just an amazing thing. Okay, so it's done pretty quickly, so not too bad, right? 
let's start with the text-based editing. So I'm going to choose the sequence, right? I'm going to choose the sequence here. And we have to make sure that this is what we're looking at. It is the sequence. And um, there are a lot of things in here that I don't want. So I'm going to select that. See, all I did was click and drag to select that. And I want you to notice that it put in and out points in the timeline for me. I want to delete that. So in fact, I'm just going to use a extract here, which is the apostrophe, but I'm just going to click on the icon and there you go. Boom. I edited it out by selecting the text. And that's kind of really, really cool. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to select this, right? And look at the in and out points, right? So look what it has. It has what I like the most about of it. It's a, a, a nice piece of country, blah, blah, blah. Now I'm going to right click and I'm going to cut it, extract it. Control X, Command X if you're on the Mac, right? So boom, gone. Now I'm going to put my playhead here at the beginning and I'm just going to paste Control or Command V. And there you go. I just cut something out, edited it out. I rearranged it based on text. And it's working even on a multicam sequence. This is fantastic for me anyway. As you can plainly see, this feature makes the editing process much more efficient, especially for videos with a lot of dialogues or interviews. Now, let's jump onto color correction and Lumetri tools using the Auto Color Corrector. This feature uses Adobe Sensei technology to apply intelligent color corrections to video clips. Color corrections are basic adjustments, such as exposure, white balance, and contrast, that enhance the look of your footage. Typically, color corrections are applied before doing creative color grading. To use the auto color, make sure that you have Adobe Premiere Pro version 2.2.3 or later. All right, so let me go ahead and open the original multicam uh, sequence. So I'm going to press and hold control here, and there you're going to see all of the cameras already in sync, right? So I can select now this, and let's talk about Adobe Sensei utilizing AI for color correction. So I'm just going to go to Lumetri Color. So here, select a clip. And look at this. Boom, auto. It's just doing its thing. It's waiting a little bit. And there you go. You see how all those sliders got adjusted? There you have it. You can increase the intensity of the change or decrease it. Look at that. It's just amazing. Amazing. So I think this is still a little bit too dark. So I'm going to make it a little bit brighter. Now I can make this clip invisible and I can see this one. Look at this. Boom. Auto again. It's thinking about it. It's doing its thing. And very, very soon. And there you have it. Now I can adjust the intensity as well. I think I want to do this a little bit more and maybe saturate it a tad. Of course, you know, I'm, I'm doing color correction, not looking at the scopes. So let me fix that. Let me look at my scopes. And there you have it. So you can see the before, after, before, after. Pretty neat, right? Let's do it with a third clip right there. Here we go. Auto. It should take no time. Change the intensity. Maybe I want it more. Maybe I want it less. Turn it on and off. And finally, with the last one, hit the auto. And there you have it. Change the intensity more or less. Turn the effect on and off. And you can see the change here in the vector scope. Uh, you can see the change here on the scopes. I'm going to reduce the saturation a little bit so that those blues don't go out of range. Not bad at all. I love this technology. It, it, listen, it gives you a starting point, right? I'm not saying, hey, this is all the color correction you need to do is just click on that button. No, that, that would not be true, um, uh, because it's still learning, right? Um, 
But oh my God, it gives you a great starting point. And then you can use the other tools to just fine tune it and make it perfect. So, you know. Now let's discuss AutoCut. This tool is especially useful for projects with lots of pauses, like lectures of conferences, sessions, that sort of thing. First, you need to install the AutoCut extension. And once it's installed, you can access it from the window menu in Premiere Pro. This clearly is saying, select the clip to cut in the timeline. So I'm going to select this clip. I want you to notice the length. See how it's 17 minutes and 10 seconds. This is a session from a conference. So there's a lot of pauses and, you know, ooh, and, uh, uh, you know what I mean? People just thinking about what they're going to say, which is normal speech. However, in a video, especially for social media, maybe we don't want that. So, uh, in here, I'm just going to use the AutoCut V2. And this is what I have. Right now, it's analyzing it. But soon, it'll let me just show you the different settings that we have here. And here we go. I'm just going to show you the silence durations. See, 0 0.3 seconds. So remove silences longer than, and we can change this value, and remove talks shorter than. Right, so uh, we can configure the padding, uh, all of that good stuff. I'm going to leave the defaults exactly as they are. All I'm going to do is click on cut and delete. Look at the length, 1710, cut and delete. And it's going to get to work very, very soon. And now it's done. Let's see what it did. 1540. 1540. So it got rid of over a minute and a half. And it tells me here that we saved six minutes and 35 seconds. So yeah, minute and a half, one minute and 32 seconds. That's how long it took. And uh, this is how many hours I have saved uh, so far. <laughs> I don't know how accurate that is, but hey, there it is. So AutoCuts really is saving me uh, some time because I do this while I'm away from the system, right? So this is just its time. It's not my time. So, you know, another thing that saves me a lot of time is Clips Exporter. Here, I already have Clips Exporter open. And, you know, I usually use it to create YouTube Shorts, right? So imagine that this was already edited. I'm good with it. Happiness and joy. And I published it on YouTube. And now I want to create some shorts with this very same material. So this is what I would do. I would just look for that um, sequence and I would duplicate it, right? So there it is. So copy and paste. And I'm just going to call this one shorts. And this is the duplicate, right? I'm going to double click it. And there it is, shorts. I'm going to change the settings. Um, so I'm going to go to sequence settings and I'm going to make this 1080 by 1920. All right. I'm going to leave everything else the same. And it gives me a warning, blah, 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 blah. Now I'm going to select just one of these clips and I'm going to make it smaller and move it up. All right, so I'm going to scale it to about yay, and I'm going to move it to about yay. Now, I like for my shorts to have open captions. So I'm going to go to text. Uh, I'm going to transcribe this, and then I'm going to create captions. All right, now that it is transcribed, and it took about uh, maybe seven minutes, uh, this clip, uh, the original one, is about an hour. Um, so now I'm going to create uh, captions. So I'm just going to click on these three dots. I'm going to click on Create Captions. Subtitle default is fine. And now I have my captions. I'm going to select this clip and go to the Effect Controls panel and simply copy Motion. I can now select all of the video clips. It's okay if the audio gets selected too. And I can paste. 
So to copy, Control C, Command C if you're on a Mac, and to paste, Command V if you are on a Mac, and Control V if you're on Windows. And now pretty much all the clips are going to be like that. Now we need to take care of the, the, the captions. Remember, I want open captions, and I want them easily readable on YouTube or TikTok or whatever it is that you're going. So I'm going to go to the Essential Graphics panel, and I'm going to go to Edit, and I'm going to change this. So um, I'm, I'm dealing now with the captions, right? So I can change the font. I'm actually going to go to an Arial. Uh, I think I want an Arial Black. Uh, I may want it uh, maybe a little bit bigger. Yeah, I kind of like that. I want it to be blue, maybe this color. I want it to have a background, uh, completely solid, and I want the background to be white. I want for the background to be a little bit bigger, and I don't want a shadow. Yes, I like that. So now I'm going to change this zone. I'm just going to move it up. See how the zone I have on the bottom center? I'm now going to move this up like yay so that it is here. And this is the value that I'm choosing is minus 844. So I'm just going to copy that. I'm going to create a style. And I'm going to call it Luisa Shorts. And I'm going to give all of my captions that style. I'm also going to paste that setting in all of the captions. Okay, so now that everything is the way that I need it, what I'm going to do is, um, first I need to populate this area here at the bottom. And I don't have to populate the whole thing because most shorts are watched on a mobile device. So uh, uh, there's overlays that, uh, you know, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, and all the others put on top of the video that make this area pretty much useless. But if I had logos or whatever, I would put it in here. So I'm just going to import, uh, say, my company logo. It's just um, Mid-Atlantic Drones. And I'm just going to put it here. And I'll make it as long as the entire video. And I'll make it smaller. And this can be anything, right? It doesn't have to be a logo. It, it, it can be anything you want it to be, or just leave it blank, right? So I'm just going to leave it like that. All right, so this is my setup for the shorts. All right, so here we go. Now I'm going to zoom in, and I could do a search for words, you know, but if I just want to do it random, I'm going to set an endpoint here and say an out point here. So I for in, O for out, I'm going to extract that. Now I'm going to click on the sequence, zoom in, and I'll go about 10 seconds in, right? So that's about it. Maybe a little bit longer, maybe here, and I'm just going to cut right there. So I'll use the razor blade tool and I'll cut it. And now I'm just going to separate those a little bit by using the select forward, the track select forward tool and moving these to the right. Now I'm going to set an endpoint here and I'll go somewhere, I don't know, around here and I'll set an out point. And I will extract that as well. So these are the things I don't want. Remember, I'm going to get maybe three or four shorts out of this, and then I'm going to export them and upload them to, uh, to YouTube. So here we go. I'll go plus 10 seconds. And there it is. And I'll end it kind of here. So I'm going to cut here. And now I will separate it like that. 
All right, so each and every short is going to be like a set separated by a tiny little bit of space. All right, so same thing again. I'm going to set an endpoint. I'll do it here. And let's grab shorts from a little bit later. So say around here. So O for out and extract. So this is going to be my third and last short for this particular video. And then I'll use clips exporter. So I'll click on the sequence and zoom in. And say maybe here, I will just cut all of this down the line and now select forward, track select forward. And I'll take it to around here and I'll just cut, select everybody to the right and delete it. And now I am left with three distinct, uh, this one is a little too long, so let me cut it shorter. I'll cut it here. I'll select all of these guys and delete. And now I'm left with three distinct shorts. This is where Clip Exporter comes in, right? So here we go. With this selected, I am going to give it an encoding preset and I'm going to use uh, the, the one that I'm using for FMC, which is Open Captions. And it's going to ask me which tracks to look at. And I wanted to look at the track where this is on. So that's V3, so video three. I can add filters, I usually don't. Uh, it's asking me for a file name. I usually give it a sequence name and then the clip index. So this would be shorts one, shorts two, shorts three, but you can give it any name you want. And then the output folder, I'm just going to go ahead and choose a custom folder. Now, this took me a while to figure out uh, with a clips exporter, um, but see how I chose a custom, custom folder and then it's like, okay, where is it? Yeah, just minimize Premiere. So click here and you will see here the choose folder. So I'm gonna do it on the desktop and I'm gonna make a new folder. I'm just gonna call it shorts. And there it is, click OK. And now see it right there, desktop shorts, and there you have it. I could select and send all of these to Adobe Media Encoder. I'm not going to do that. Uh, so all I'm going to do is click on Active Sequence. And this is just a thing of beauty. It's already exporting those clips. And you might say, hey, Luisa, you know, I could have done this a lot easier with just the in and outs. Trust me, with 30 clips, with 50 clips, with whatever it is, this is easier. And if you need to render, say, just color corrected clips without being edited, you don't even need to separate them. You just choose video track one or whatever those video clips are on and just export them. And there you have it. Uh, I do it with my drone business all the time where I shoot log and then I color correct it and give it to the client already color corrected right? So I just put it in the timeline. I don't edit it. I just add a lot, color corrected, you know, make it look pretty, and then export the clips one by one. And that's what I give the client. It does make a difference. And voila, all the clips have been exported individually, and I didn't have to do it one by one. To end, I want to reiterate that I am stoked to announce that I will be presenting at the upcoming AI Summit organized by FMC, Dell, and NVIDIA in partnership with NAB. The event will be held online on September 14th and 15th and in person October 24 and 25 in conjunction with NAB Show New York. It's a great opportunity to learn about the latest trends in AI and how they can be leveraged in creative workflow. For more details on the AI Summit, visit AIcreativesummit.com. Once again, I'd like to clarify that neither Dell nor Topaz or Adobe or no one else is sponsoring this video 
or paying me. Dell made this workstation available to me, but had no expectations or requirements. I bought all of my Topaz tools, all the Premiere Pro extensions that I showed, just like everyone else. I am sharing this information of my own volition to simply promote my sessions at the AI Summit. So again, no one is paying me to do this. All right, here are my sessions at the Summit, the URL to get registered, and I truly hope to see you there. Thanks for watching and see you next time.